Throughout my six years of full-time traveling, I heard loads of things about the Central Asian country called Uzbekistan. Some people said it was one of the most beautiful countries they had ever seen, while others said that the locals were friendlier than anyone they had ever met. Understandably, I've been wanting to visit this country for literally years, and now that I finally got the chance, I decided to make this video where I'll tell you everything you need to know about this gorgeous place before actually coming here. Welcome to one of the coolest Central Asian countries, Uzbekistan. Even though Uzbekistan is still a young country, its territory has an incredibly long and rich history. You see, for thousands of years, Uzbekistan was at the center of the Silk Road, the land route that merchants used to travel from China all the way to Europe. They became so rich from all the trade that they were able to build some of the richest and most beautiful cities the world had ever seen. However, their prosperity came at a price. The region was so rich in trade and fertile lands that it was conquered again and again and again by some of the most famous conquerors in history, like Alexander the Great and Genghis Khan. When Genghis Khan arrived with his army in 1219, they completely ravaged the lands. The Mongols were ruthless and destroyed many cities and displaced countless people from their homes as they tried to take power of the Silk Road. A few generations after Genghis Khan's death, many of his descendants fought for power in the region and a man named Amir Timur emerged victorious and conquered Central Asia, Iran and parts of Russia. Even though he was a brutal conqueror, he loved science and arts and sent many craftspeople and philosophers to Samarkand to make it one of the greatest cultural cities in the entire world. After the death of Amir Timur, the Uzbek nomads began to take control in Central Asia and by the start of the 16th century, they conquered the region. But because of never-ending wars and the decline of the Silk Road, their once prosperous lands fell into a state of disrepair. Some centuries later, Uzbekistan ended up becoming part of the Soviet Union, which was a time of Russification of Uzbekistan. By the 1980s, however, Moscow's strict control in Uzbekistan, mixed with their attempts to uproot Uzbekistan's ancient Islamic tradition, led to a strong sense of nationalism in the Uzbek people, and they wanted to run their own country. Finally, they got their wish and declared their independence in August 1991. My favorite thing about traveling in Uzbekistan is of course the local people who are so welcoming, it literally blows my mind. Welcome to Uzbekistan, my friend. <laughs> Welcome. Another thing to note about the Uzbek people is that they're very proud of their rich culture and history, that they'll tell you loads of interesting stories about the country's past and present. They also have a real passion for traditional Islamic arts, and they're doing a wonderful job of restoring old palaces and mosques to their former glory, creating Islamic-style paintings and hand-stitching and knotting absolutely incredible embroidery and silk carpets. Ask any Uzbek artist about their trade, and you can watch their eyes light up as they tell you all about their ancient craft. Cheers to the wonderful people of Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan! <laughs> Uzbekistan's people live between the country's 14 districts, or Tuman as they call them. While millions of Uzbeks live in the major cities like Tashkent, Bukhara, Samarkand, and Kiba, most of the population lives in these small, traditional rural communities with their entire families. Those communities are spread across the whole country, from the deserts that make up around 80% of the total land, to the gorgeous mountains in the north and the south of the country that are so beautiful, it literally blows your mind. About 93% of the Uzbekistan people practice Islam, and it has been the dominant religion since the 7th century. The mosques in Uzbekistan are unreal, as they show the country's long history and love of beauty. And everyone you visit here is more stunning and special than the last. Uzbeks are people of tradition in many ways, including sports. One of the favorite sports in the rural communities is an incredibly unique and ancient folk tradition that you've probably never heard of. The equestrian sport called Kupkari was a game invented in the 10th century and is extremely popular in Central Asia. It's even said that Genghis Khan used this sport to train his soldiers for war. It's traditionally played in a large group with a dead, headless goat, and the goal is to grab the goat from off the ground and ride far away from the other players without losing the goat or falling off the horse. Villages all over Uzbekistan come together every spring to watch the Kupkari and, of course, eat lots of plov. 
Speaking of Plov, let's talk about Uzbekistan's food. There's a little something for everyone to try here, but here are the top traditional dishes you certainly cannot miss. Somsa, buns filled with lamb, beef, and potatoes. If buns aren't your thing, then you should try shashlik, meat skewers that traditionally use lamb, beef, chicken, or liver and are served with thinly sliced onions. If you're a fan of homemade noodles, then you have to check out narin, which is um, noodles with horse meat, what? Too much meat for you? No problem. Fill up on some of Uzbekistan's insanely delicious bread, like non, which is Uzbekistan's traditional bread. And finally, no Uzbek food list would be complete without the country's national dish, plov, a heavy rice dish made with cumin, lamb, beef, onions, carrots, spicy chilies, and of course, lots of garlic. It is time to tell you the top five facts you definitely didn't know about this country. With more than 30 million people, Uzbekistan is the most populous country in all of Central Asia. Uzbekistan is one of only two doubly landlocked countries in the world, meaning neither it nor the country surrounding it touch the sea. Uzbekistan also has the fourth largest gold deposits in the world. Not only that, they are famous for making these beautiful, intricate, handmade silk rugs. With traditional designs and the natural dyes, it is no wonder these carpets sell for literally tens of thousands of dollars. And finally, the wrestling sport known as Kurash was invented in Uzbekistan and is popular all over Central Asia. It's a form of wrestling practiced by two people standing up with the goal of knocking the opponent off their feet. Because you watched the video until this very point and now that you know all these awesome things about Uzbekistan, I'm sure you want to come visit this country at some point. Now, now when you do, check out these epic touristy places to explore. They won't let you down, I promise. Tashkent Metro. I've seen many metro systems in my life, but nothing as unique as this. Built by the Soviets as a potential bomb shelter in case of a nuclear attack, the metro system somehow ended up becoming incredibly artsy and unique. Some stations have chandeliers, others detailed mosaics, and the most famous one, the station at Kosmonavtlar, has beautiful ceramic discs portraying Soviet cosmonauts. Kiva, this 6th century city is so well preserved that there are almost no new buildings in the city. You can visit ancient mosques, stroll through the winding streets, walk around the minaret and explore the Khan's palace. Kiva was a major training port on the Silk Road and it was the last place merchants went to before crossing the desert to the next city of Bukhara. Bukhara, known as the holiest city in Central Asia, is a place where the first mosque was built in the region. Bukhara used to be a major center for trade on the Silk Road and was known as the city of a thousand merchants. That's why today you can still find hundreds of merchants and artisans in the many markets scattered throughout the city. And finally, Samarkand. This is one of the oldest cities in the world that was built around 2700 years ago and even though it isn't as rich as it used to be, it will certainly take you many years back in time with its beautiful mosques, museums and awe-inspiring square. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. There's obviously so many more things I'd like to tell you about Uzbekistan, but I don't really think that makes sense because now I want you, you bloody legend, to come visit this beautiful country on your own, to explore these amazing places, to meet these really friendly and welcoming people and, and have yourself loads of fun. Thank you so much for watching the whole video until the very end. If you thought it was meaningful and useful, don't forget to share it on your social media with the hashtag LoveUzbekistan and tell your friends about it. Thank you so much, have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and I'll see you next time.